All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Crypto News and Investigative Reports. I'm glad that you're able to join me today. Uh, we want you to please follow us, Crypto News and Investigative Reports, on Twitter right here. Here's our handle right here. Our handle is RobTech, R-O-B-T-E-C-H, RobTech P. Crypto News and Investigative Reports at RobTech P. Please follow us on Twitter. Go ahead and uh, subscribe. We kind of tweet out most of the news articles that we go through on this program. Also, please follow us on YouTube. Crypto News and Investigative Reports on YouTube. Just click that mute button right there and subscribe. Also, please hit that bell. And then that bell will give you an alert every time we put up a video. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened last time on my video. Something happened with YouTube. I took the video down, put another video up, and then had to take it second down for a second time, and then put it up again. And then they said something was wrong with my URL. So YouTube has been tripping on me a little bit. But uh, nevertheless, here we are again. Hopefully things will work out right on this video. All right. Thank you for joining me. Let's get to some news all right um, let's see here what do we have first thing we have right here and like we said we tweet out these articles usually during the day so if you follow us on Twitter you can kinda of be ahead of what we're talking about hey let's talk about that lightning network you know that Bitcoin lightning network um, that is that's amazing the lightning network is a layer 2 payment protocol that operates on top on top of the blockchain based cryptocurrencies it takes it's a it's a layer and um, it, like Bitcoin that's kinda of who's actually using that uh, lightning network uh, it features a peer-to-peer -peer system of making micropayments of cryptocurrency through a network a um, bio-directional payment channels without delegating custody of funds so that's what's happening with this lightning network now that's what the Lightning Network is. But also with this uh, Bitcoin Lightning Network, I'll just say it like that. Um, now they've kicked it out into space. It said the Lightning Network users can send Bitcoin micropayments across the globe and beyond. And what it is saying now is that it, it doesn't have to depend uh, on, it, it can handle a major disaster. It says now Bitcoin can withstand major disasters such as a financial crisis or a nuclear war and can operate independently of internet providers see so now it's in space <laughs> that's crazy but you know um, they they said the blockstream satellites now offer support for the lightning network and enable anyone in the world to be able to send and receive Bitcoin and that's interesting that it can handle that now the test like I, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking earlier today about Venezuela and without getting into the politics of Venezuela, which is something I don't want to get into, but I will say that Bitcoin is being tested there. And people that have Bitcoin are still being able to function, buy and sell, send and receive in the midst of a globe, in the midst of their financial crisis, their political crisis. Bitcoin is still functioning. And so that's that's good news, guys, uh, for those of people that are in virtual currencies, especially for the Bitcoin maximalist. Um, the, the, you know, they, they can actually claim, you know, look, Bitcoin has been used in the middle of a in, in the middle of a financial crisis like um, Venezuela is actually having. Uh, there was a couple of articles out last week about somebody moving 60 million dollars worth of Bitcoin. Um, somebody else. There's a lot of different articles. You just start researching. There's a lot of articles about people that have been surviving during that financial crisis in Venezuela using Bitcoin. Uh, so that's that's a shout out. I think when any virtual currency does well, it's good for all virtual currencies, right? And so um, that that's that's pretty interesting news right there. So you might want to go by our Twitter page and read that news. Uh, let's keep scrolling. Uh, I got my clock set for five minutes. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, here's another Swift banking news. There's some Swift banking news. Swift uh, X S G X, which is the Singapore exchange. Uh, major major banks uh, join hands for e-voting on the proof of concept using distributed ledger technology. There's four banks. There's the German bank. There's DBS, HSBC, Standard Charter. 
uh, they're all going to test this uh, proof of concept will be in, in, on this Asian Pacific region. And what they're going to do is they're just going to be doing some some voting and, and they're going to be using distributed ledger technology to see if this, this it works for them. It's a trial uh, thing for them. And, um, and as it does, you know, it, it's really going to show them whether they can use distributed ledger technology. It helps them to confirm. It's like a test. That's all they're doing. They're testing the distributed ledger technology. The proof of concept, the POC, for corporate shareholders e-voting using distributed ledger technology will be um, railed for the Singapore, Singapore by SWIFT, a global messaging service provides for financial institutions in collaborations with the Singapore Exchange, SLIB, a security software provider, and four banks. This was announced by SWIFT in a press release on March 6th. So that's what they're doing. A, a press release, it says the global, the, I'm sorry, the goal for the proof of concept is to explore whether the distributed ledger technology can help simplify the current inefficient management of shareholders meetings and the associated voting process that are often time consuming and resource intensive. See, so what they're going to be doing is instead of testing it directly with their uh, funds or anything like that. They're testing it with their voting process to see how they can take how it won't be so cumbersome. It won't take so long. And actually, that's pretty good. Um, Swift is, you know, is really trying to step up uh, and really trying to move into distributed ledger technology. They don't want to be left behind. They got 11,000 banks. They don't want to lose their clients. So they're doing everything they can to hold on um, and uh, try to move to distributed ledger technology. I know a lot of people out there is following the story. Stay on top of it, guys. Stop by our Twitter feed and you can continue to read it. It just came out earlier today. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Block TV. I'm kind of first. I was I was watching some of it, then I wasn't, then I was, and I wasn't. But um, Matt Hamilton is a is a dynamite chart analyst, man. And this guy, um, he's getting he's building a big name for himself because he's doing some. He's a Bitcoin person. He's a Bitcoin maximalist, and then he's talking to people in XRP community. He's talking to people in uh, Ethereum communities. And um, just trying to get some kind of neutrality in it, right? He's not trying to say oh, we're better than XRP, Bitcoin's better. He's not going into those fights and those emotional arguments. He's all of the news right now for virtual currencies is in the charts. All of the other news kind of is warmed up. IMF news is, you know, I did videos on the IMF news about, you know, last year 2018. IMF, World Bank, Central Bank, banking. All of that's old news, uh, but um, the, the, all of the real news is in the charts. And um, so anyway, Block, Block uh, TV is, is uh, really good for uh, great interviews, um, you know, get you some more uh, upscale, uh, quote unquote, professionals uh, that are giving you money, uh, giving you investment knowledge about investing your money. In virtual currency. So anyway, if you're not watching Block TV, I'm not. I don't get paid for saying this. I'm just saying they. That's a really good place to go get some non, some no nonsense um, information. Uh, uh, it, it's really a, a dynamite, a dynamite channel. I like it. I like Block TV. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, here we go. Right here, guys. Um, let's start by this article right here. This is uh, Carnado's uh, Charles Hoskinson's slams the JPM coin after Brad Garlinghouse said it won't ever see mass adoption. And that's kind of, you know, I know the Ripple uh, XRP community was talking about mass adoption in 2020. I did a little poll um, on Twitter and 75% uh, uh, said that they believe that uh, XRP will be mass adopted next year, uh, 2020. And that's what that's 10 months from now. So I can't see that. I don't believe that. I don't think you'll have mass adoption of any virtual currency until you have uh, regulations in place uh, and not not been with, you know, without regulations in place, you're, you're not going to have any uh, any mass adoption. Uh, so anyway, that that's a pretty good article. Uh, he, you know, he, he kind of, you know, he kind of slammed. Um, 
the banks is what he did. Uh, this Charles Hoskinson, he slammed the banks. He he was, you know, and he not only did he slam banking. He in this article he also slams the Federal Reserve, uh, and so that that's kind of weird because um, XRP is supposed to be something that works with banks. You know, it's supposed to be a banking uh, coin, and you know. So anyway. Uh, you might want to stop by and read that article. I don't want to read all of it, but I'll tell you what he said. He said that bankers are, he called bankers criminals in this article. And he said, I saw the JP Morgan coin and listened to it. And you guys just don't get the space. You know, he was trying to say people at JP Morgan don't understand what what's going on. You don't know how any of these things work is what uh, Charles is saying. Uh, it's an abomination of the concept. <laughs> He called the J.P. Morgan coin an abomination of the whole concept. Um, and then he says, first, they are like the Federal Reserve. So he called J.P. Morgan. He said they're like the Federal Reserve. Of course, J.P. Morgan has a lot of connections with the Federal Reserve, um, just as much as the Rothschilds and, you know, just as much as all the other uh, those aristocratic families. They all are connected to the Federal Reserve. They're all connected to uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, J.P. Morgan, all those guys run together. And uh, <clears throat> they're going to have something to say about virtual currencies. Um, so I don't, time, time will tell what, what's going to happen with them. All right, uh, let's move on. Um, the next thing is uh, dedicated global ecosystem paves the way for a real uh, cryptocurrency adoption. There's another article I just posted, dedicated uh, global e economic uh, ecosystem paves the way to a real virtual currency. I didn't even really read that that well, so I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, where else did I want to stop? Mm, 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 mm. There was some IMF news, um, but it's it, it was maybe said, but this is IMF news. It's kind of a day old, couple of days old, but the IMF recommends immediate actions on Malta AML anti money laundering and combat financial terrorism supervision in Malta. You know, Malta is having some issues. Uh, it's the hotbed right now for virtual currencies. It's kind of trying to be the, the, the place, you know, the place to go for virtual currencies. It's, it's trying to be the Bitcoin place, the Ethereum place, Ripple, Litecoin, you know, Bitcoin Cash. It, it's just trying to be the, the, the mecca of virtual currencies right now. But, but trying to take on that title there's still some issues uh, that um, that are that hasn't hasn't come clear and so uh, there's some regulations that need to take place before uh, just like everything else it's just banking regulations need to take place uh, the IMF still you know like they was in 2018 2019 they still trying to get central banks to do CBDCs and not you know it hasn't not not that much stuff has actually really moved uh, things are still, things are still in the same place. Malta is still having political issues, regulatory issues, and uh, the IMF is looking at them. So you can stop by the Twitter page and take a look at that article and read a little bit more if you like. Um, then I thought I had one more about interoperability. Um, I think I have one more article about interoperability. Uh, the thing. You know, the thing is, uh, the thing with um, interoperability is that, you know, and even, even back to the Lightning Network and all of those type of things, you know, they, they're not going to, um, they, they're going to get that, that, that part of virtual currency worked out, the interoperability part. Uh, that, that's not going to, uh, to plague anybody, any, I don't, I don't see interoperability being a problem within the next maybe year, year and a half. I, I, I see interoperability as something that's going to be worked out. Uh, interoperability is basically a software problem. Interoperability is, is a, a technical problem. It's an IT problem. Uh, interoperability is a, um, uh, it, it, it's a problem that the computer science engineers are working on. Uh, that's what they do in the Silicon Valley, by the way, because that's where I'm reporting to you from, the Silicon Valley. And that's what we do here in the Silicon Valley. They work on interoperability problems. That, that's how people in the Silicon Valley make their name. 
they make their name by working on interoperability. And interoperability, all it is, it, the problem is, is that they need to build a layers on, on top of that. Um, let me let me put it to you like this. Um, what 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 the work? Lo looking ahead at, at fixing the problem of interoperability is what they need to do is is continue work on these open protocols and these uh, multi-chain frameworks and that's what they do here in the Silicon Valley all day. They work on issues like interoperability. Now, a scalability is another issue that they are working on in here too. Um, that's that's the word on the, on the ground here. They're all putting building on scalability and interoperability. Their their whole thing is application layers, and they they're building layers on top of layers on top of layers to to uh, tech to in these technological layers to fix these issues like interoperability and scalability, application layers, transport layers, interledger layers, ledger layers. And uh, I wish yeah, I can go into what each of those app, what an application layer is, transport layer is, interledger layer, and and how these layers are being built on top of each other to help this scalability issue. Uh, and so that that's what they do here. I don't know how I got off into that, but I know everybody's talking about interoperability. But I'm telling you, that problem is going to be solved. We're not going to have interoperability problems forever. It, it, it's going to be solved, and 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 I, I'd say definitely by the end of next year. Um, there, there's going to be some different problem solving and interoperability is not going to be one. They got and they, The other thing that they're doing here in the Valley is they're doing atomic swapping and they're building on the top of atomic swapping where blockchain, you'll be able to go from one blockchain to another blockchain, uh, you know, and, and you'll just be able to move around from blockchain to blockchain. It doesn't matter what virtual currency that you're using. And so those kind of issues are going to be solved. Now, the other issues uh, uh, like... Um, liquidity issues those issues are uh, for uh, financial investors big financial investors buying and selling virtual currencies whichever one they select that that that's a whole that's that to me that's more political that's a political issue uh, that 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 I, who do I want to give my money to how much of my money do I want to put into a virtual currency how well can I move my money around in that virtual currency that has to more to do with some the person's, uh, uh, you know, those financial institutions' choice, like the Wickelvoss brothers was talking about Gemini and why people would want to use them instead of using somebody else, instead of using Robinhood, and you know all of these different types. Th those are those those financial issues are a person's individual choice, you know that you know and every they, and people banks want choices, people want choices, so liquidity buying and selling virtual currency moving money around in virtual currency those are more of whoever chooses to do that as opposed to somebody because nobody likes to be forced to put their money somewhere you like to have the choice where you want to put your money and so like you know and so those I, I see those problems being fixed in the next couple of years the uh, interoperability problem being fixed I see that being fixed real pretty soon here I'm I'm pretty sure, and I, I don't know. I'd say definitely by the end of next year, there ain't gonna be no interoperability problem. Uh, uh, scalability problems, that's gonna be a little more intricate. It's gonna take a little bit more time. So, but anyway, like I said, with crypto news and investigative report, I'll go back through. If you're not watching Block TV, please uh, start watching it. It's pretty good. You might learn something. I learn a lot watching Block TV and the interviews that they have. Um, and we talked about this swift banking news. We talked about the Lightning Network for Bitcoin uh, that they're using for their micropayments. And uh, once again, please uh, join us. Crypto News and Investigative Reports. Hit that button and subscribe. Be a part of our CNIR community. Thank you for watching.